Radio Giggle Water and Quilt. What you say? No Boulder Dash or Baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. Oh, seal broken. Yep. Welcome in, everybody. Mm. The Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for listening. I'm Greg over there. That's Scott. Mellow. That's <laughs> Dan. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> or Droopy the Dog. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> That's Scott. Oh, I don't know what that was. Anyways, <laughs> welcome in. Thank you guys Would for. Would you step see? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, one more thing that Dan's good at. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. nice. droopy impressions. Yeah, apparently. pretty good. I guess so. Mine's not good. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have quite the show for you guys. Thanks for tuning in on episode excuse me, batch thirty-seven of the Unfiltered Gentlemen. We have the very first ever craft yourself segment. Yeah. Very excited about that. All right, it's a very tasty segment. And then to uh, counteract that, in case you're poor, we also have boozing on a budget. There you we'll go. Get into that. Got it. Uh, beer news. Dan was watching movies. He's yes. got some movies to talk about. Lots of sports to talk about. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> and so much more. Uh, before we get into uh, our craft yourself. I should lay down the burp word of the week. It's blood alcohol concentration. Oh, shit. Wow. (laughs) And there's a good reason for it. We'll get into that in a little bit. Cool. Blood alcohol concentration is our burp word of the week. I think this is uh, Scott's time to shine. Oh, man. I don't know. If if I had to put my money on somebody in this room. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to even try it. Yeah. (laughs) Can't do it. I'm going to put my money. Might pass out. Yeah. (laughs) My my money goes to the guy that pounds three Red Bulls before we start. (laughs) (laughs) May not seem like it. I'm tired. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, blood alcohol. Oop. I just killed that. There goes that song. Blood alcohol concentration, (laughs) everybody. All right. uh, Let's not waste any more time. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer Oh, well I don't have a Craft Yourself song yet Oh yeah I gotta think about that one so in the meantime, it's, uh, it's it's our beer of the week and craft yourself. <laughs> I'm so excited. These two haven't had it yet. I've had it. It's effing delicious. I'm so excited to introduce them and those of you listening to Firestone Walker Bravo. Bravo. 2017 Vintage. Mm, yes. It's called Encore because I want some more. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a single hop strong brown ale brewed using the hop variety Bravo. The beer is an aged for up to a year in uh, circa 1990s used Heaven Hill bourbon barrels. And boy, is it effing delicious. <laughs> it's it got is. A, yeah. It's got 94 on Beer Advocate. So wow. you know they're not fucking around. Uh, 13.2%. percent mm. So it's packing a punch. 28 oh, IBUs. Yeah. It's, uh, like we said, re- it's fermented in retired oak bourbon barrels. Well, and you can smell that right out the gate. I mean, it's, it's, oh, yeah, it's that got that, that... Bourbony, sugary... Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. The sugary, especially. It's really interesting that uh, putting beer in bourbon barrels tends to make it real sugary. I wonder what that is, what process makes that happen. Yeah, correct, right? Yeah, you because know, you drink some bourbon, it's like, this isn't overly sugary. Or if you drink the beer prior to it being aged, it's not overly sugary, but uh, those two together make one tasty sugary dessert beer. Yeah, no kidding, right? Never thought about that. Yeah, because, I mean, it's not sugary, obviously, as, you know, when you're drinking, you know, by, by itself, mm-hmm. either, either product. So, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, I've never described a bourbon as sugary before. Yeah. So, it's, it's a strange... Strange thing. I guess we'll have to talk to a brewer about it. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple of brewer interviews coming up in the next couple of months. Oh, okay. I guess I should tell everybody. We're going to be talking to uh, Josh over to M Special in uh, Goleta, California. And uh, I've just talked to John from Leashless Brewing, who is opening up later this year. They're still in the building process, but he's going to come on and talk about what it's like to fucking open a brewery. It's quite the process. Oh, wow. So okay. Jazz them about burble, burble, bourbon barrel aging. Burble? <laughs> you put it together, it's burble. Burble. Burble aging. <laughs> Yeah, really sweet, sugary notes. A lot of like brown sugary yeah. type flavors. A little bit of molasses, maybe. Yeah. Um, I wonder if that's anywhere on the you know ingredients somewhere. We're like just not noticing it. Like, do they maybe. just maybe really they just mix- dump molasses into it or yeah. brown sugar? And I imagine maybe mixing those two things together. Like they said, ah, we need to sweeten this out or something. It's a little too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a great uh, chocolatey, cloudy color to yeah. it. Poured with very little head. 
It's very smooth. Goes down easy. It's a little hot on the finish, a little uh, boozy, if mm-hmm. you will, on mm-hmm. the finish. Uh, but Correct. Boy, and not in a bad way, in a nope. nice, delicious, bourbon-y kind, oh, yeah, of, definitely. kind of direction. Yeah, well, I want to know that I'm drinking some sort of bourbon a little bit. You know, if you're going to age oh, yeah. it in there, like, I want to taste it, too. So Yeah, don't chicken out on the bourbon. Exactly, flavor, exactly. So you definitely get that taste, yeah. you know, and I'm glad you do. As a gentleman and a real man, Correct. I yes. enjoy bourbon. Yeah, there of course. Go. Bourbon is days. We got to have some bourbon on the show one of these days. Why not? I got a sure. really good one sitting in my bar, so... I'll drink to that. Yeah. (laughs) And you just drink that. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah. So, craft yourself. Firestone Bravo. If you guys see it, check it out. This is the cool thing that Firestone is doing now. All their bottles are being offered in 12-ounce bottles instead of the uh, stereotypical 16 or bomber. Mm. And that's able to keep the price down. So, this was 10 bucks instead of what would have probably been 16 to 20 bucks for the bottle. (laughs) It's a little easier. And the pocketbook is their goal. Still the great same uh, tasty line of beers, vintages, and all that stuff that they do. So mm-hmm. if you see yourself a Firestone Bravo, do not pass it up. Do not be scared by the $10, 12-ounce bottle. It's uh, it's absolutely worth it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to maybe a little sports talk. Sure. It's been a while. Whether it's the Baltimore chop or the one-two punch, it's time for sports. Oh, yes, it certainly is. Uh, in honor... Of listener Kyle, who emailed us a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. We have a baseball story. Oh, good. Right yeah. on. So, uh, yesterday, Tim Tebow. Oh, in the bathroom. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You'll want to hear this. Our Lord and Savior, oh, oh. Tim Tebow. Oh, praise him. Yes. Uh, he went up against Max Scherzer, and, uh, well, he did so well, he struck out twice. Ooh, oh, wow. Yeah. Who would have seen that coming? <laughs> oh, yeah. Spring training, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yes. had an off day. Do we think that Tebow is actually going to make the team? No, uh, he, it, his, there he said he's going to be sent down. Oh, to the lower oh, really? A. They're actually keeping him on a minor league deal, though. Know, he's going to be in the minors, just yeah. lower A team. Do you think that's because that of like his a B jersey plus sales? sales? Yeah. Probably. I mean, it can't be because of baseball talent. No, I mean it's going to be the same reason they kept Michael Jordan on one. Yeah. You know what I mean, because he's Michael Jordan, and that minor league team had never seen so many people in attendance. Exactly. Well, I wonder if he's doing the same thing Michael Jordan did. I think the one of the reasons Sucking. they kept Michael Jordan was because, like, for all their trips, he would like buy take care of the bus and all that. So they they'd ride in style instead of those little yellow buses. Oh really? Oh, roll yeah. the windows down, you know, and sweat to death on the way to their little games. <laughs> It makes sense. That's true. Yeah. Well, hey, keep Michael here. Those, uh, what, the Birmingham Barons or whatever? <laughs> like wow, that. you actually remember the team name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're traveling with Tebow, you're traveling with God. It's true. It's, it's God true. is his co-pilot. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> He'll steer him straight. Uh, what else? A soccer player thanks his girlfriend and his wife all in the same uh, oh, thank job. you speech after, no way. <laughs> after his game. Uh, a Ghanaian soccer star may be in the doghouse after giving an awkward live TV interview where he mistakenly thanked his wife and girlfriend. <laughs> Mohamed Anas, Anas, Anal, I don't know, who plays for South Africa's Free State Stars, had just been named Man of the Match. When I he guess. Made, yeah, when man he made of the, the Match. Yeah, I'd say so after yeah. this. When he made the 14 slip of the tongue during a post-game interview, he says, Firstly, I appreciate my fans. And my wife and my girlfriend. Yeah. Whoops. Oops. I have the audio. It's pretty bad. Let's cool. see if we can discern it here, if it will uh, play for us. And I uh, appreciate my fans also. My wife and my girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, my wife. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my wife. I mean, uh, oh my shit. God. He's stupid. Now they're both mad at me. Yep. Uh, he could have covered that so easy. My wife and my girlfriend, which is also my wife because she's still my girlfriend. Right, yeah, because I love her so yeah. I mean, uh, it's like those pussies that call their wife their best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. With that. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. yeah. So we keep it fresh. She's also my girlfriend. You should have just said to my special lady friend. Yeah, because yeah. that would have covered everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or it mystery. It's like, I was talking about you. And mm-hmm. then you get home to the other one. Oh, I was talking about you. Yeah, and they'd even ask, like, oh, were you talking about me? Ooh, Fuck, you know yes, it. I was. Hey, I'll tell can't the whole world that. about you. Yeah. <laughs> can't be all that smarty play soccer, you know. Well, there is that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. What a dumb. <laughs> that sounds so bad, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, a Mexican bullfighter needed rectum reconstructive surgery Ouch. after taking a bullhorn to the bee hole. Mm. <laughs> Another one? Yeah. <laughs> These guys keep getting those horns up their ass, man. Tail as old as time. <laughs> I'm wow. telling you. Uh, here's the thing. Had to have it reconstructed. I went back today because I saw this last week. Alvia sent it to me. Mm. I went back today to get the details of the story and get the video. They've the taken deets. the video down. The person's YouTube account has been deleted, and they've taken all the details. Like, the, 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 oh, oh, two-thirds. Man. 
and they've taken all like the gory details off. It's just broad strokes now. But I remember them saying that uh, the horn went literally 12 inches mm. inside of him, right up his keister. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, get that guy a donut to sit on. Oh, my God. That is rough. Can you imagine? No, I'd rather no, not. I, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Anybody else taking 12, in, 12 uh, inches out there? Uh-huh. Whew. Not 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Six is your limit. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of taking 12 inches, apparently Tinder, the dating app Tinder, is helping NBA players sleep better and uh, <laughs> have better performance on the road. I bet. Yeah. Apparently, they're not having to stay out late and go to clubs. And so, because of that, they're, they're getting to uh, cut right down to the, the business yeah. <laughs> uh, find their lady callers on Tinder nice. and, uh, you know, do it and get in and get out. There you go. There you get you go. your rest. Yeah. yeah. Get ready for the game. Mm-hmm. And, and that's good for everybody, I think. So that <laughs> yeah. way, you know, you don't got Michael Jordan pretending he's got the flu and he's <laughs> right. really hung over looking. I mean, who knows what he was doing, but you know. Yeah. Like hours of sleep. Yeah, exactly. And you know, these guys can, you know, hey, come over at eight instead of ha- having to bring them back at two or three in the yeah. morning yeah, or whatever. Right. There you go. And yeah. imagine all the greasy food they don't have to eat now because oh, they're not getting drunk yeah. as much going out. And yeah. I, I posed the question, what would happen if Magic Johnson had this back in oh, the playing shit. days? <laughs> telling you man he would have had to retire in 85 i think (laughs) they probably would have had six championships (laughs) would have stopped at six yeah Mm -hmm. he would have won every single championship that as long as he played right but it would would have only been six it would have been over so soon yeah they actually Uh, did a family guy on tinder a couple weeks ago did they yeah (laughs) really quagmire didn't know anything about tinder and they told him all about tinder and he kind of went crazy oh Mm. man I still, I'm one of my favorite episodes of Family Guys when they told him about the internet and there's yeah. porn on it. Yeah. They didn't see him for weeks and he came out and one arm was huge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you all right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> this is kind of the same thing. Once he found out and then they never saw him again. Yeah. And he's like, once they found him, he's like all skinny, you know, in his underwear and just like, you know, just he could always stare at his phone and just all kinds of oh my weird, God. skanky ladies coming out of his house. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a high school coach has been suspended after he allegedly put his dick in a hot dog <laughs> bun <laughs> and showed his players. <laughs> dick in a bun. It's my dick in a bun. Dick in a bun. <laughs> high school football coach in Spokane, Washington, has been suspended with pay. At least he's getting paid. Uh, <laughs> while the school investigates complaints that he exposed himself to students at a leadership camp last <laughs> summer, according to records describing the allegations, which were obtained by a local news organization, the coach put his penis in a hot dog bun, <laughs> showed it to his players, and said, quote, you think that's a big dog? Take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Uh, Jim Sharkey was suspended in February, according to uh, the Spokane spokesman, whatever review. Newsbury reported the specifics, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a couple weeks after the camp, Ferris player came forward and said that while Sharkey was grilling, he turned with his exposed penis inside a hot dog bun and said, you think that's a big dog? Take a look at this. While the coach got a written reprimand was allowed to coach this past <laughs> fall, schools of, school officials placed him on administrative leave February 1st after uh, more players claimed to have seen the hot dog incidents and other students brought up uh, several incidents of questionable behavior by the 11-year oh, teacher oh, and coach. Yikes. He denies exposing himself <laughs> and said, you already investigated this and I signed a paper. Hey. How many students did I expose myself? <laughs> several. Oh, come on. How many? Numerous. Oh, please. Several? Numerous? Eventually told... And Templeton, who he was talking to, eventually told him to, uh, that three people had reported. <laughs> you know what the investigator should have said? But hey, if it don't fit, we must have quit. <laughs> <laughs> Pull out a hot dog bun. All right. Yeah, let's, let's see it. Let's see. <laughs> nope. That's a small dog. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. See? Mm-hmm. That's a cocktail weenie. Yeah. <laughs> he was also accused of drinking alcohol in front of players at the camp and calling a female student a puck slut or puck bunny huh. because she was friends with hockey players who attend the school. Uh, reports also allege that football players would gang up on a player on their birthday and shove their fingers in the player's anus. Ooh which they called juicing. The complaint said no adults knew about these incidents. Uh, he denied drinking at the camp, but admitted he saw other adults drinking per the reports and said that uh, the comment about the female student was not meant to be inappropriate. I mean, in the hey, nicest on. way. Yeah. <laughs> He's a high school football coach. What do you want him to say? <laughs> yeah. I meant puck slut to be endearing. I know. They all said some crazy shit, man. Yeah. He said, I would not allow this. No way. You better have dates and times of the juicing. If you say 10 to 15 times, you better be able to tell me exactly when and who. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Someone got juiced. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, God. That's great. That's ridiculous, though. I mean, I understand, like, you know, when they would 
take some random person and like give them a uh, uh, swirly in the toilet. Sure. Or, you know, tape someone, you know, naked to the pole or something like right. that. Or, you know, I mean, that's hazing. I mean, yeah. all this like butt play. That's uh, <laughs> There's a lot of it now. It's wow, crazy. Yeah. What does this world come to? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of butt play. Man. All right. Uh, football. Well, NFL talk. Goodell. We hate Goodell over here. I think it's pretty clear, but he's doing Correct. something good that uh, might turn out to be, uh, you know, much needed change for the NFL. Yeah. He wants to restructure the timeout schedule um, and make it so that they're shorter on TV and that the commercial breaks don't take as long. He's proposing uh, a plan that'll shave five to eight minutes off of every game. Oh, wow. Ooh, five to eight minutes. Yeah, a whopping five to eight minutes. <laughs> the four-hour marathon is going to be down to it's like three fifty-five. <laughs> I know, right? I was about to say, that's like the length of one commercial. <laughs> yeah. You're going like, to cut one commercial, yeah. it sounds like. A new record. We got this game over in 3.53. I know. Yeah. Uh, let's let's do other things to make the game better, like, uh, you know, kickoffs. Yeah. None of this bullshit where you can't kick off. Yeah, right? it Come like on. doesn't exist anymore. Right, it doesn't exist. Or just If you're not going to let them do a full return or whatever, just... Get rid of it all together. Yeah. Flip a coin. Here's the ball. Right. Stupid. I mean, I, I do see what they're saying a little bit in the sense that you kind of take away the ability to, you know, do like a trick play and try to like get the ball back. You yeah. know what I mean? But such a waste of time. Like, all right. So mm-hmm. one team scores. Oh, no, it is. And then they go to commercial break and they come back and they kick it and return or don't, you know, take a knee, whatever it is. Go to commercial break. Switch teams. Come. It's. They need to. They need to work on. And that. it's funny because I watch Red Zone, and when I don't watch Red Zone, you want to kill yourself. I, it's I. I forgot how many freaking commercials there right. are. It is ridiculous. Yeah, Red Zone is glorious. It really is. Every sport should have Red Zone. Yeah, I know? agree. Wrestling should have Red Zone. Even. Baseball should have yeah, something. You. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Well, I think baseball is the biggest one that needs to take a look at these right restructurings. Fucking pitch clock, people. Hey, <laughs> going back to football, if they want to save time, get rid of half the rules that makes the referees have to throw their flag. That's what takes oh, up a yeah. lot of time. Oh, yeah. yeah it is you got to call a penalty. You got to walk it off. You got to announce it to the crowd. Mm-hmm. And, you know. <laughs> well, and how about instead of the referees, I keep, I've keep i been saying this for years, instead of the referees reviewing the play on the, on the monitor, have someone dedicated to every game reviewing every single play, and then when there's a challenge, by the time you've thrown your flag, this person's already got an answer. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I agree. One person. Easy yeah. as that. It's I don't quick. I don't see how that could be a problem. Yeah. That would really mean? speed it. Because I hate when the referees sit there for like eight minutes. They're probably just, hey, man, did you have beer last night? Yeah. <laughs> got laid, too. Oh, wow. That was on Tinder. <laughs> yeah. <I was> about <laughs> <to> say- <laughs> <laughs> Saw Kauly Leonard on there. It's, oh, uh, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Same town. Uh, what else? Uh, NFL owners approved the Raiders move to Las Vegas. Hey. Mm-hmm. There you go. Dan's going to be in Vegas a whole oh, lot man. That's right. Oh, man. <laughs> I wonder where when they'll fin- finally open the the stadium though. I don't know. I was thinking it's about be a that few too. Years. Yeah, yeah, but they're saying twenty twenty. Th- yeah, yeah, they said yeah. That I think the next two years they're actually going to still be playing in Oakland. Mm. So at the that should be interest- I, I I'm interested to see how the Oakland fan base handles it. Like, are they going to be what like Oakland fan base? Well, no, the actual fans who are there. You know what I mean? It's the Oxnard Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, unofficially they have been yeah. like the L.A. Raiders, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm uh, the, there. There is you know Oakland fans, and I am mm-hmm. curious to find out if they're going to be like booing them and angry that they're leaving, or are they going to ro- be rooting for them to win one more one championship before they leave? You know what I mean? My guess. Because I know uh, via my lady friend who's from NorCal, a lot of people up there got pissed the last time they came to LA and switched over to the Niners. <laughs> oh. So my guess is that'll happen again. Whoever's left will, you know, go to the Niners and they'll just fuck you, Oakland, kind of thing. Yeah. Now the, the stadium's still going to sell out because everyone from down here in LA is going to be up there, right? Um, but I, I don't think they have a lot of Oakland fans left. That's my guess. We'll find mm-hmm. out. Yeah, we'll we see will. how right. That's I interesting. Am. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of shitty teams, the Chargers what sell out. <laughs> There's season tickets at StubHub Center. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 See, they can't be shitty if you sell out. Yeah. Let's not forget, though. That's only 30,000 seats. It's not a big arena. So. <laughs> but it is kind of a fuck you to the city of San Diego. Pretty much. Like, no one would ever come to a game, but we went to LA and sold out our, our new stadium. That's true, too. And, and it is kind of... Uh, I mean, there was a big outcry about them coming to LA. Everyone's like, mm-hmm. uh, we don't want you. But yeah. it's like, apparently, some people want to watch them. My, gu- my guess people. is... Yeah. 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 <laughs> My guess is most of it is like people trying to resell the tickets. Oh, yeah, you know, I don't know. At least half of these people just yeah, want to that's the true too. Because who wants to go to a Charger game eight times? Hey, that's okay because now it's going to be on TV. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that'll that'll be super exciting. Yes, it will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, Almost as exciting as watching Kaepernick throw a ball. Speaking of which, oh, 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 what a segue. Cap restructured his deal, so he's a free agent now. Oh, he nice. says he wants uh, somewhere between 9 and $10 million <laughs> and a starting position. <laughs> For how many years? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> but he, wa- he wants to be guaranteed a starting position and 9 to $10 million. If he wanted all that, why did he leave San Francisco? Yeah, why did he restructure his deal? <laughs> yeah. I, I love that he restructured his deal, but I think he's an idiot for doing it. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He was making so much money and doing so little to earn it. Yeah. Who's going to take him now? Yeah. I mean, you know, who? somebody else was kind of speaking out and saying that, oh, that the owners are uh, with Kaepernick, that, that it has more to do with him, you know, and his stances that he takes and stuff like that, as opposed to him as a player. And uh, I can't remember who that player was, but I was thinking, well, why don't you have him quarterback for your fucking team? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Put your money where your mouth is. That guy sucks. Well, let me ask you this. If uh, Well, in fact, we'll use Tom Brady as an example. Yeah. Tom Brady is a known Trump supporter. Yeah. Do you see anybody kicking him off the team? Nope. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Yeah, it's true. If you could throw the ball, no one cares who you yeah. support. If you win. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all that counts. Yeah. Michael Vick, you know, killed a bunch of dogs, but right. when he had that one year when he was playing really good for the Eagles, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we love him yeah. again. And it was like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's the biggest apology you can give to, right. the, to the public is yeah. a great performance. Exactly. That's so, what they say. The, the way to get the fans to forgive is just win. That's yeah. right. That's all you got to do. He raped my wife, but he won the game. Yay. <laughs> uh, look at, uh, what's his name? Ray Rice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Didn't he kill a guy? (laughs) He hit someone really hard, apparently. (laughs) Yeah. Brick killed the guy. (laughs) Uh, Basketball top, the Kings are interested in former 76ers GM Sam Hinkle. Oh, my God. Yeah. I believe it's Hinky. Or is it Hinky? Yeah, it sounds really weird. Whatever his name is. He's the idiot who just destroyed the 76ers. He did. I mean, or did a favor because they got a bunch of draft picks out of it. I mean, it's yeah, it's tomato, tomato, apparently, because... You know, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't defend all that losing, man. That's a no. lot of losing. Even the Lakers, it's like... Well, it's I, one thing to try, and then you get all-star break, and there's just no mathematical right. chance. It's like, well, we better fucking prepare for a draft pick at this point. Mm-hmm. That's a little different. It's hard to watch, but it's a little different. Right. But to just from day one, be like, ha-ha, I'm throwing <laughs> the ball out of bounds, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's not... It's not yeah. Good. You should and, be fined. And, and and what do they got to show for it? Joel Embiid? Yeah. yeah. That guy's Andrew Bynum at this point. Well, He's they had done. him too. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. They did. So they, that's they clearly don't know what they're doing. Right. Because like I said, everyone was like, oh, the Joel Embiid, the process. He's playing so well. <laughs> and I was like, he his problem was his knees. Yeah. Don't tell me that's not going to bite him in the butt again. And why is he out right now? Because of his knees. Exactly. Right. He's done. Couldn't He's done. Off. Do Done. they know cup checks available? Yeah. <laughs> just wondering. Well, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could he be any worse? Oh, yeah. man. I'd, I'd say they're probably neck and neck. I think you get a package deal of cup check and Jimmy Buss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would. You're looking for an owner. Yeah. Oh, combo. my God. Jimmy Buss is a well, free Well, they got agent Shaq now. as a minority owner of the Kings, don't they? Is he really? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I swear. Wait, you got I bring Shaq? this back up every time, and we're all like, really? <laughs> Shaq and Vlade are running the same team? <laughs> you, you said that same thing the last time I brought it up. Oh, well. I, I remember drunk. that. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting we, we, yeah, that. we were very drunk. Yeah. That's right. Yes. But that's Shaq, funny. the Who one was? that kept calling him the Sacramento Queens, is now yeah. part owner. Um, Correct. Of said team. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised Vlade doesn't get down there and just teach him how to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Which uh, just kind of leads me to just kind of a quick thing. Uh, I watched a Laker game the other night, and mm. why isn't anybody talking shit about Luke Walton? <laughs> I mean, they, you know they, you know they got down oh, he's, Byron he's Scott. tanking like this is purpose, right? I I hope so. I watched the other night, and they're confused. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. Well, yeah. who's who's their one? I don't want to say good player, but solid player, Mozgov, yeah. and. He said like a month ago, I'm shutting him down for the yeah. season. Like he, he has said, we are going to get a good draft pick. And that maybe Pretty Magic much. told him when says Magic took over, says say, uh, well, just yeah, to, just tank it. What's, yeah, because, what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Get those kids in there, get some time on. Yeah, them. I mean, we do need you know, the, it's not just this pick, but we'll also lose the 2019 pick. So I mean, this is this is huge, man. We got to yeah, we got to lose. I, I, hope that's, but, I certainly hope that's what they're doing. And I, I think hope, it's yeah. top three, right? Protected? Yeah, type three protect top. Three protected. Yeah, correct. so they really got to tank. Yeah, to man. try and get that top. Well, three. Th- and supposedly Brooklyn's starting to actually p- accidentally win games. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, so I uh, suppose they I, fucked around and got a triple double. Yeah, I yeah. think they're only like a game behind us. So oh, like, geez. yeah, if we could lose some more, we'll get in that number one. I don't and then, think you have to try too hard for that. <laughs> yeah, they really suck. Wish granted. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, last thing with sports, I had I wanted to ask you guys a question. I have my feelings about this, but we're in the middle uh, of March Madness right now. 
And to me, it seems like it's like the most lackluster March Madness in recent history. Do you guys, A, agree, and B, do you care about March Madness? You know, it was funny because I was going to ask that before I saw the rundown. I was like, oh, shit, we're actually going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, But I was going to say that, um, you know, I I usually take part in a, a pool of some sort you know, uh, having to do with the tournament and I fill out my brackets and I'm watching and, you know, every game, you know, because they actually mean something to me. But sure. right now, because I don't have a dog in the race or anything, like I've just been not really paying attention to it for whatever reason. So yeah. I don't know. And, and that's weird. Like I usually watch it all the time, but it's, I usually also have a bracket. So I don't know. It's interesting. I feel out a bracket because somebody really needed a couple extra people in their little <laughs> oh, right. group. Uh-huh. I was like, I don't know anything about who's playing this year. Correct. I don't give a shit. I just I chose UCLA to win it all because they've got the ball <laughs> yeah, on there. Ball, huh? uh, other than that, I was like, I don't know anything. So I'm I'm obviously already out because I chose UCLA. Oh, yeah. But, but my thought is I don't give a shit about March Madness. <laughs> I will usually watch the, the final four games because mm-hmm. just because it's good basketball. Yeah. But uh, really don't care. Hmm. Not it's you could just put on the all-star game for all i get right yeah well, what i also like about it too is uh th- there's two things uh number one it's it is the last competitive level of basketball before they really start playing for money you know so it's mm-hmm. like at this point they're really just playing to for the game still yeah you know uh the other thing i do like about it though is that um there can be so many upsets because it's only one game elimination. So like that, that one true. game actually means something. Where like you know in the NBA playoffs, and I'm not you know discredit. I still love the NBA playoffs, but you could lose a game. And, oh, we'll get them back you know next right. time or whatever. There is no next time in the in March Madness. You Warriors, gotta win Cavs. every single game. Yeah, or you're gone. I wish they'd do like a, a red zone with March Madness. <laughs> you know, just like the last four <laughs> minutes of every game because a lot yeah. of these games get close and right. get exciting. But I don't really need to watch the other. I think they did have something like a whip around coverage of March Madness, Mm. which, I mean, you're right. That would be pretty sick, man. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I could could deal with four minutes each. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I could just answer with a question, and that Mm. is, how many teams are left and who are they? (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't answer that. I I know that UCLA (laughs) is no longer in it. Yeah, they're out. I think they got beat by Kentucky. Mm. Sound about right? I think it was last weekend that yeah. they got beat. So and whatever, I don't fucking know. Uh, all right, enough with that. Let's do uh, let's do a little crotch talk. Oh boy, have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Uh, not a lot of grievances. <laughs> I never have. Gr- I, gotta, I was about to say I that. Change that intro. <laughs> <laughs> you got something nice about the talk? <laughs> nice, about, nice to talk. Got something nice to talk about? <laughs> I don't know what accent that, that turned into. Uh, the guy from Taxi. Um, <laughs> so as as I reported, <laughs> Lotka, Lotka, Lotka thank you, Kravitz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my <laughs> Now you're making me think about what did he always say? I don't know. Oh man. Uh, as I said a, a show or two ago, I was thank going you to very much. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I was going to Mammoth, and uh, while I might have been going to ski, uh, it was more importantly going to drink. All right. Oh, did some drinking at Mammoth Brewery. All right. Right, right on. Oh, yes. Did some really, really good drinking. Did some great research. There's pictures all over uh, Instagram and cool. Facebook and Twitter. Check those out. Um, also, stopped by Mountain Rambler Brewery. This is in Bishop, which is a little town right outside of, well, not right outside, half an hour out of Mammoth. If you're coming from SoCal up to Mammoth, you will pass through Bishop. It's kind of the last town you pass through. And uh, it was pretty good. And and so I stopped and you know their beers were fine and and nothing crazy to report back nothing bad at all. Uh, they had a really good imperial stout, but their Scottish ale was fucking fantastic. Scottish ale, yeah, Ooh. and those are usually hit or miss for me, but uh, it's good, mm. it's really good. So if you're going through Bishop. And hopefully it's only because you're going to Mammoth and not stop it in Bishop. Uh, <laughs> stop by Rambler Mountain Rambler Brewery and get uh, get that Scottish ale. Cool. And then uh, finally, I wanted to talk about my beer trade I set up. Uh, listener Alex, who found out about us uh, when I was on uh, the Borrow Lifestyle a few weeks ago, and he he heard me, listened to the show, liked the show. So thank you for that. He set up a beer trade with me, and he's uh, so we're trading beer between here in California and, and him in Florida. And so oh, got my man. first shipment of the day. Had a beer. And uh, it's pretty tasty. All right. right maybe on. one of these beers I'll share with you fuckers. <laughs> That's that coast-to-coast trading right yeah. there. Yeah. You know, Florida beer is not something I've uh, really been experienced with. Uh, yeah. I, I can't you know, even think of one. There's, there's one brewery I could think of, Cigar City Brewing. 
and fuck. I've never had them. I've just heard of them uh-huh. before. Right? I've never even. Oh, oh, oh man, a little bit Falling closer. Short, <laughs> like LeBron on Monday. Oh, uh, oh. swing and a miss. Yeah, like Tebow, Tebow, and Scherzer. Yeah, um, and he sent me one from Cigar City Brewing. It's, it's one of their IPAs. So I think that'll be the one we should try on right on there because uh, I've been excited for that one for quite some time. Cool. So I like that. Uh, I have a grievance to share. Oh, nice. What's up with this beer, man? What Feel you, this. What do you mean? What? Oh my god! This is a half-empty beer. Yeah. What the hell it's, happened? Yeah, it's not opened. It's a little oh. sticky though. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Well, let me say this: Don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, isn't that interesting? That is uh, dicey as fuck. Hell yeah! And quite interesting. I have a grievance to share with Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Sorry. Nothing I makes me madder than a half open, half a can of beer that hasn't even been opened yet. I know. Wow. I that's... don't. Know, I just. I was like, what the hell's wrong with this what thing? What the hell? Yeah. Well, that doesn't bode well for boozing on a budget. It doesn't. Yeah. Check your can. You know. What? Let's just get right on into uh, boozing on a budget. <laughs> Boozing on a budget. We can't buy pockets like you know this. Boozing. Budget beer on tap is hopeless. We are sober. Beer so fly. Can't buy. You know this. Boozing. Pops and malts. Oh my. Stay focused. Boozing on a budget. Uh, Bravo, I really don't want to disrespect you. It's their special like, five and a half pack versus a six pack. <laughs> that's why it was so cheap. Yes. Yeah. Oh god. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. So from craft yourself to boozing on a budget, we're uh, we're covering the gamut today in beer prices. Got them. Boozing on a budget. We're drinking Tap Seventy Nine Brewing Company. It's their double IPA. Uh, you can pick this up at TJ's and probably only TJ's. I realize we do a lot of TJ's boozing on a budget. It's because they do really great they do. beer. Yeah. They do. They have good uh, beer at a good correct. price. At exactly. good price. That's right. And that's the point of boozing on a budget. Good beer at a good price. So if you you guys uh, are not near a TJ's, I apologize. Let me know and then maybe can find another boozing on a budget for you. Let me know where you guys are. You might get another case of that beer right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I should should contact you. What the fuck? It's half empty. It's like um, Strange Brew and they found a rat in their beer. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Maybe there's a rat in that one. Oh. That's who drink a beer. That's why it's half empty. Yeah. Snaps. Some passed out rat in there. Exactly. Yeah, you know what? Don't let them take it from you. Say, hey, let's pop it open and see what's in there. Yeah. (laughs) You never know. We should. Oh, it's a finger. Oh, my God. What the hell? But just definitely show it to them while it's not open because, yeah, otherwise they'll just say, you just drink this. Yeah. 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 I do that with all my kids. (laughs) (laughs) You just drink this and put a nose in it. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so we're drinking Tap Seventy Nine Double IPA. Uh, it's not; uh, it doesn't have enough ratings on Beer Advocate, but the few that are there kind of give it a three and a half ish out of five. Not bad. Mm-hmm. We're rocking an eight percent here. Hell yeah! Not too shabby. It's good. Yeah, um, I get uh, a lot of citrus and floral with this. Definitely mm-hmm. a hoppy finish. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely hoppy. I'm digging. Smells that. hoppy. Oh smells, yeah. Uh, a little bitter to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the thing: it's about a buck. 20 a can i think it's like eight bucks maybe for a six pack seven and a half bucks for a six pack can't beat that great price oh yeah and and so i tried one the other day before we talked about the show because i didn't want to just bring in a cheap beer and then try it live and say it's great but it sucked uh it's good Mm -hmm. so i did some research because all of trader joe's like quote-unquote brands are brewed by a legit brewer this one's brewed by golden road oh wow really Mm -hmm. no wonder i like them so much yeah golden road right here in la they've got some great ipas i like their wolf something wolf Pup or whatever. IPA. Wolf Cop. I believe it's a Wolf Cop, uh, <laughs> wolf think, Cop IPA. Yeah, exactly. I think it's Wolf in the Reeds or something. Something like that. Like that yeah, whatever the Wolf is, I think it's really good. They got a wolf lot of. Cop. Did you say Wolf Cop? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, they have a lot of good beers uh, at Golden Road. So I thought, no wonder they say it's good. It's made by Golden Road. Yeah, and, uh, Golden Road's a shit right, man. right here in LA. So, like their Point the Way IPA. That's a good oh, one too. Yeah, that's yep. good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you have a Trader Joe's, look for Tap Seventy Nine Double IPA, and you too. Can be boozing on a budget. There you go. Just a little word of advice: check all the cans before you. Yeah, apparently. (laughs) Yeah, weigh them. Like hold up one box to the other. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I see why it's on a budget. What a trip! (laughs) Oh god. Uh, Dan watched some movies, as we said. Before we get to that, we do have a beer review from the bearded black man. All right. What's going on, folks? This is Ralph, aka the bearded black man. And unlike Roman Reigns on your TV screen every Monday night on Monday Night Raw. This beer review, you actually will enjoy. Ooh. Now, the last time I came on here, I told y'all that Alabama had had some amazing beers. So I figured with this being my first beer review with y'all, why not do an Alabama beer? 
So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, this is the first ever Bearded Black Man Beer Review. Now, this beer that we're going to do today is called Unobtainium. Unobtainium comes from Straight to L Brewing Company out of Huntsville, Alabama, and it is an old L age and bourbon barrels and coming at you at 11.5% ABV. Now, Unobtainium definitely fit this beer very well because it is very hard to get. What I mean by that is, once it's on the shelves, it's gone really, really quick. So if you ever see it on the shelves or you ever see it in a trade, go out and get it because it's definitely one of my top 10 favorite beers from the state. A little bit about the appearance is definitely a dark brown, just like me, <laughs> but also has a little bit of a garnet ruby highlights to it when you put it up to the light. Not a lot a light comes through it, so it is very dark. Almost has the same kind of look as a quad, but it also has a little bit, when I poured it into the glass originally, it has about a finger's worth of off-white color head. The aroma definitely has the bourbon in it. If you're not the biggest fan of bourbon, you probably won't like it, but it's definitely you up re in your life. front with the bourbon. <laughs> it also has a little bit of some dark fruit notes, so you're going to have a little bit of some dark cherries, mm. definitely some plums in there, and then the barrel, you can definitely smell it with the oak and the vanilla. Nice. It's not overkill, it's not too sweet on the nose, but it definitely has a little bit of the sweetness to it, <laughs> but it's definitely a very, very delicious smelling beer. Let's see if it's actually delicious in the taste. In the taste, it's definitely, definitely a good one. Um, like I said, bourbon. <laughs> That's the main story Hashtag about this bourbon. beer. It's just yeah. bourbon. Yeah. It also has a good bit of carbonation to it, so you can definitely feel it in your mouth. Giggity. Funny thing about this <laughs> beer is, with it having so much bourbon into it, you would think that it would be a hot beer, and it's not. It is very smooth in the taste. The bourbon mixes very well with the old ale. So you're going to get a lot of the bourbon notes, a lot of the vanilla oak that you got in the nose. You're going to get it here in the flavor, but you also get that same dark fruit notes that I mentioned as well. And overall, this beer is so damn good. I mean, it's definitely a sipper at 11.5%. Don't don't try to chug this. If you want to, <laughs> Mazel Tov, have fun with that. But I definitely say that you want to sip this beer, enjoy it for everything okay that it you, is. Scott. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, chug it and it it's an over. amazing beer and needs to be respected as such. But hey, that was a very easy first beer review, huh? I appreciate you letting me talk your ear off about all this great beer coming out from the state. There will be even more coming out very soon. But this week is all about WrestleMania for me. I'm getting <laughs> ready to watch it on Sunday. Right. Well, not really excited because some of the matches are not the best, but <laughs> what can you do? But tell me this. In one of my posts on my Instagram page, which if you're not following me already, shame on you for not doing that. Follow me at Bearded Black Man, and that's B E E R E D Black Man. And let me know what is your favorite WrestleMania of all time. My particular favorite was 25 because Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, it was an awesome match. That was definitely one of my favorites of all time. But let me know in probably my most recent picture talking about this particular episode and tell me what your favorite WrestleMania of all time is. But until the next time I talk to y'all, be good, have fun, don't fuck shit up. Roman Reigns sucks. <laughs> now I'll talk to you again really, really soon. Peace. Just for him. <laughs> oh, dang. oh, man. That's rough. Roman does suck. He does. Really? It's garbage. Oh, oh I like Scott's Roman. Scott's going to mark really? out for a second. I like Roman. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm wow. not surprised. Sorry. He's also a Cena fan. Yeah, I like Cena. Oh, are you Oh man, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah. Wow. Ralph's. I don't know why, because I, I you know, and I see them come out and I hear people booming like, why are they booing? I guess because they're terrible 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 uh, 
not talkers like me, but terrible wrestlers. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Um, you know, but I, I, I could see what you're talking about. Like, I mean, they're just like their overall like Aren't power like for the and ability. Correct. And all right, so do we have a favorite WrestleMania match and um, or Mania? Yeah, he really put me on the spot there. I can answer to give you guys a little couple of seconds yeah. here. Yeah, sure. Um, I have two. I really love, well, I have a few. I loved his, his 25 reference. Mm-hmm. 25 was good. So I think it was 26 was the second match with Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. So 25 and 26 were great because those two matches were fucking phenomenal. 26 is where uh, Shawn Michaels retired. But uh, one of my favorite moments of all time. Now, I was at third 20, I think I was at 28 when they were in Miami. That was that was pretty oh, fun. Right. That was when uh, Undertaker fought Triple H. Good. Oh, damn it. oh damn it. man! But He's one of trying. my one of my favorite Strike of all time three, WrestleMania twelve, and that was the Iron Man match. Oh yeah, oh, that's that right. Good. Bret Hart and HP Correct. And you know, I was going to ask you about that too. It was like, was that a wrestle? I honestly couldn't remember if it was a WrestleMania or not. But like, I swear you had not look it up. I know it's WrestleMania oh, I'm twelve. Sure, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know what's awesome about that match? You can never do it again. There no. can't, you can't do another Iron Man match because there's... It was uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I mean, they're that entertaining that yeah. you could put them on for there's an not, hour and yeah. nobody's going to boo. Right. No one's going to say this is right. boring. They're going to be loving could do it that? There's not the entire many that you hour. Could do that with. Unbelievable. Absolutely. All yeah. right. Anybody have a favorite WrestleMania match and or WrestleMania? Man. That was a good one, man. I mean, I mean, oh my god! Off the top of my head, um, I just thought of a couple real, you know, without really digging into it. Uh, one was uh, Undertaker and uh, Mankind, Hell in a Cell. Yeah, when he went off the cell into the table. was that Mania? Was it Mania? May maybe I'm. Been. Maybe it wasn't Mania. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. It might have been Hell in a Cell. It might oh. have been the name of the paper. Well, then never mind. I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. <laughs> I and did then, like. Oh, sorry. Cut you. Yep. Oh, that's okay. The other one was maybe this is not mania either. <laughs> <laughs> was when uh, Bret Hart uh, choked out Stone Cold, where he, you know, he had the, 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 the hold on him. <laughs> was that what was that? Survivor Series. Survivor okay, Series. so then I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Fuck WrestleMania. Who watches know. that shit? You know, I think uh, Pro Woman Reign. The one I remember was a WrestleMania. I hope now, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I was a kid when I watched it, and I just remembered it was uh, Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior, where they mm. unified the the belts, and oh. Ultimate Warrior had beat him for the championship, so he held both heavyweight and intercontinental, mm-hmm. and I think that was the last time we ever saw the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, then he came back at WrestleMania, oh, don't make me think of the number, somewhere early teens, I think, and fought Triple H. Oh, oh yeah. my God, really? You don't remember that? No. It was like a fucking hot dog. He was so red. Oh, my really? God. Really? It was bad. Oh, man. So, anyway. Triple H yeah, I, or and I know. I know. <laughs> Those are two like traditionally terrible wrestlers, but when I was a kid, you know, I didn't know any better. And it I was exciting. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. I have a child like mine. That's why I yeah, like. I'd these say guys. that's accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say that Cena appears uh, appeals. <laughs> damn. Yeah. Uh, to like the what was it like the eight to thirteen year olds, which is right yeah. in right in my league. So. Perfect, but, yeah. especially but, after a couple of beers. But I also do like uh, like the one I can think of right now was uh, when uh, uh, Stone Cold and The Rock uh, mm. were in WrestleMania. That was good. Too. I, that was good. Anything with Stone Cold, yeah, know, exactly. You know or like when uh, Stone Cold and Scott Hall and, and he gave him the stunner and he bounced up into the third row. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good too. It's probably one of the best stunners. Uh, I can tell you my least favorite. Okay. Oh. Maybe this is not WrestleMania. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> it was SmackDown. When Stone Cold uh, turned. That was a house heel. show. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't remember when he turned heel. I mean, I remember him turning heel. I think it was WrestleMania, though. Yeah. I, I think it was one of the WrestleManias. Now, he was fighting The Rock, and then Vince came down and had him this probably. year. Probably. Stone Cold did win the championship from Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. I like that mm, match. That was a good match. That's my favorite one. Yeah. That, was, that was when Shawn Michaels <laughs> was like super cracked out and super injured. That was the last match. <laughs> It was his last was that, match before he retired for like four years. Oh, okay, really? Yeah, yeah. It was still a pretty good match for, you know, normal standard, not yeah. Shawn Michaels standards, but yeah, that anyways. Iron Man match, though, that was that sick. Was, yeah. That I, was sick. I would, I've watched that a few times since. Like, it's such a good match. You can yeah. still watch it. So, all right. Sorry to all you non wrestling fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carried on there for a while. We, we may did. have. We we may need to get some napkins. I in just there. have to look for a WrestleMania measure. Like, yeah, <laughs> keep working on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll find one eventually. Oh, man. Uh, all right, Dan's got a movie for us. All right. I've seen the latest oh. movie. In Damn it! <laughs> Let's talk movies for guys. Who thought up this word? <laughs> Me. So, I watched a movie over the weekend. It was uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Mm, yeah, right. This movie came out uh, last year, um, fairly late last year. It's just now on uh, digital uh, copies, I believe. You okay. can order it. Download you know, from Yeah, correct. Download mm-hmm. it. I believe it's on Blu-ray. Legally? 
Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. or illegal. Or, yeah, yeah, that's how I watched it. <laughs> of course. Poison, right? There's no doubt in my mind about that. <laughs> right. And um, but I think it comes out on Blu-ray April 4th or okay. something like that. But, um, yeah, uh, I guess we got the trailer. We absolutely do. The Empire's building a weapon capable of destroying an entire planet. Ooh, they call it damn. the Death Star. You need to capture the plans if there's any Scott's hope of plot. destroying it. We want to help. All right. How many do I need? I'll be there for you. The captain said I had to. Ooh. Charming. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. I will not fail. <laughs> Imperial forces. Um, what a diarrhea in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> Dark side. Take hold of this moment. Revenge of the shit. <laughs> the force is strong. Tell me you have a backup plan. <laughs> Punch it. May the force be with us. I made that sound. I think the force is with you. Yep. Behind you. A Star Wars story. Ready PG thirteen. Oh. December sixteenth. Ready PG thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> How is that rated PG thirteen with all that diarrhea? I don't remember all that diarrhea <laughs> happening at all. But you uh, watch it again. Yeah, I think so. But uh I mean I'm gonna hey, you got the Star Wars music. Oh, yeah. But uh about to get sued. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. Um but I am gonna preface this uh review with an admission and a uh, a proud admission. Okay. I'm not a Star Wars nerd. Oh, Me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought so that, that was some other yeah. admission. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I, yeah the closet door is creaking open. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I like the movies. <laughs> you know, I watch them. And then, you know, I like... The original three were fine. I Correct. I that I've even yeah. watched yeah. them. You haven't watched any that of them? I know of. Yeah, really? I've seen the original three, and they were good movies. They yeah. weren't like something I'm going to jizz right. over. Right, I don't. I don't need to learn the language yeah. of the planet that they're now, on or what it is. Back to the Future, on the other hand, it's not my bag, it. baby. Yeah. yeah, Back to the Future. Yeah, that's that's, not, that's, that's something to jizz over. Yeah, that's okay, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's a good one. But um, uh, anywho, <laughs> anywho, but yeah, like I said, uh, and and so I don't want anyone saying, "Oh, Dan, that's not how this happened," or "That's not the character." Like, I'm sorry, I don't know the characters, yeah. I don't know the timelines, and he doesn't care. Yeah. I don't. So, so shut the fuck up. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I'm reviewing this movie as a real man. Correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, this movie is Rogue One, and uh, the way it does t- t- uh, tie into the uh, Star Wars universe is um, this isn't you know another part. Of you know this, you know that we got like part four now, which is the first one that came out. Or, <laughs> I mean, it's so confusing. Yeah. But um, this isn't another part. This is actually, um, if you remember, in the Jesus, the first one, which is now the fourth one uh-huh. that came out in seventy seven. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the the whole reason why they're going up to the Death Star to destroy it is because they got word that there was a uh, that you could detonate it from the inside. Okay. Um, because. She said. <laughs> wow. Because a um, got juiced. Uh, uh, <laughs> a mission was carried out to, d- to discover that this was possible. Mm-hmm. That's what this movie is about. This movie is about that mission. Oh, the discovery of the mission. Discovering of okay. the, the uh, Death Star plans. So to watch this movie, you would have had to see the previous one. This is, no, this you is don't. a prequel. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, oh, is, this oh, would be a prequel okay. to. Uh, the originals, yeah, the 1977 movie. Yeah, that's a good way to really? say it. I guess, yeah. So, I cause, let me tell you, this, I have not seen this one or uh, Fourth Force Awakens. Oh, you year. haven't? I haven't seen either of the, okay. the two new ones. Okay, I ha- um, I've seen Force Awakens. Are they both equally good? Is one better? Do you I, need to see them both? I kind of like this one because it's it's more of an original idea and story. Okay, uh, I kind of felt like Force Awakens was like a remake of the first star wars in 77 (laughs) okay it seemed like very much the same i kind of walked out everyone's like oh my god it was so good i was like wasn't that the same movie like i swear to god it was but you know this one seemed like it it was a story that you know people wanted to to see you know they've heard the story you know obviously from the first you know movie but they wanted to see it and that and i think this was a, a good way to show it um you know like uh uh, I liked it, and I went to go see it because my boy Donnie Yen is in it, and I was like, I know he's gonna yep. kung fu some fucking stormtroopers, <laughs> and he he sure as hell does, man, and he he plays like a a, a blind, um, 
He's, he's like blind in this movie. Okay. Yeah, so he's just fighting everybody. Like he can't. Dude, even he's really him. using the force. Oh you know, yeah, he is. <laughs> and he, he says it like multiple times. Like how he, he's like, I'm one with the force. The force is with me. Like he just keeps <laughs> saying it. Sounds like Tebow. Yeah, yeah. He's going up to bat. <laughs> he's like a blind Tebow. Maybe Tebow's blind. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Why he strikes oh, out. There we go. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the Tebow needs Come to on, follow God. the Help force or something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the the movie itself, like it, it, it's a Star Wars movie, so you're gonna have a, a really good special effects lots of nice sound and action happening mm-hmm. um you know that there's uh, some certain characters like i said if you are kind of a geek or nerd about the uh the series there's a lot of little easter eggs for you to find there's a lot of you know uh, returning character cameos you know that mm-hmm. you can you know point at and jizz over if you want you know uh but uh for the most part like you know i did like the movie um it's a movie that you do drink to. I was gonna say, did you drink? It's to a cheers or drink to the movie. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, of I, you know, yeah. Th- this is one of those movies. It's not like any of the other, like you said, like the prequels that were like came out later and they were kind of crappy, right? You know, not um, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the plus on this is there's no Jar Jar Binks. So, oh, I mean, there you God. go. You know what I mean? So, Misa really stupid. <laughs> yeah, he's terrible. Garbage. But, um, yeah, but the, I mean, I, I really like the movie. Um, right. Yeah, it was it, it was really cool. Um, the Donnie Yen, man. I, I needed more Donnie Yen, though. I will say that. Like, you know, they, they need to have a little bit more Donnie Is he a character that will come back in future movies? Mm. Would that be a spoiler if you tell me? Yeah, there okay. is a spoiler. Yeah. But All right. Let's just say. He may or may not be back. He signed up for a one movie contract. Unless, oh, there's, a, unless there's a prequel or something. A prequel to the prequel to the prequel? <laughs> yeah. He needs his own story. Yeah. I, I want to see his story. There so, we go. But yeah, I did like the movie. It was really good. Very nice. Okay. So you recommend for all your friends? Correct. Okay. All righty. Um, before we get out of here, we're running out of time, but there's a couple things we got to get to. First is Old Timey Word of the Week, and that is Duke of Limbs. Duke of Limbs. It's a tall, awkward fellow. Huh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Duke of Limbs. Duke of Limbs. He's all arms, all legs. I gotcha. You know, when you're looking like a Duke of Limbs, it's hard to get the bug. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> I was wondering how you are going to do I that. was wondering, too. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that great. Uh, and speaking of getting the bubs... <laughs> Don't stand up too quickly. It's Chick of the Day. It certainly is Chick of the Day, and you can find her on the Instagrams at Craft Breezy. Craft Breezy. Ooh. Can I look at that again? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a fine-looking female. Yes, she is. Yeah. It sounds kind of creepy when you say it like that. Fine-looking female. Hey. Sounds uh, like a so compliment to me. I was trying to make hot? it as uh, nice as possible. Yeah. She's hot. She likes craft beer. Yeah. yeah so uh, I'm good with it. And we like craft beer and bubs. So yeah, that's right. That's, that's true. Right. Like some go. bubs, fella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so go follow Craft Breezy, all one word, on the Instagrams. Uh, there's some news that I know we're running out of time. We're actually <laughs> over time, but I had to get to this week. So real quickly, news. Extra, extra, fellas. It's news for you. Uh, very importantly, we are no longer the three of us and anybody who calls himself a fan of the unfiltered gentleman no longer allowed to go to Utah. They okay. have uh, signed a new law that lowers the BAC, the blood alcohol concentration for uh, drivers uh, from 0.08, which is already in my, way my too standard. Low. It's way too low. Yeah, yeah correct. I can drive with a solid two. It should be 8.0. <laughs> Yeah, they reversed that shit. <laughs> eight point, not not point eight zero, no. but eight point eight dead behind the wheel. <laughs> Dang, they they reduced it from point oh eight to point oh five. Damn, point oh five. Yeah, we're talking like you pound a Bud Light and you better uh, think about driving before oh you my hit God. those keys. Holy, wow. Yeah, they should put crazy. a wall around Utah. Yeah, you know, I know. Last week we gave a big, we gave a big shout out to uh, Salt Lake for listening. Salt Lake, you need some protest. Protest Donald Trump, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we need to be protesting this point oh five. Don't waste your time on Trump. You got to get this. There's real problems your to be solved. Raised. Yeah, yeah real Correct. problems here. Uh, that's that's horrible news to report. But good news. We'll end the, we'll end the show on a good note. Cool. We talked a couple weeks about a couple weeks ago about speakeasy having to close their doors. Yeah. Well, 
they are back in production. Are they really? Oh, they nice. are. Uh, they, it's because of us. It is. <laughs> yeah. They uh, and news article says news article. It says thanks to the unfiltered gentleman. Yeah. All right. I bet they send us free beer. Yeah, they should. Yeah, uh, and we'll review it for them. Of course. <laughs> uh, all science. Anyways, they they started production once again. They have not reopened their tasting room, but they are producing and shipping and bottling and all that stuff. That's good. Yes. And they are readying themselves for a sale and expect that to happen within the next forty five days. All right. So within forty five days, uh, hopefully it's not in Bev. Which is Anheuser Busch. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, it's not them who's buying them, but hopefully, somebody uh, of merit buys Speakeasy and returns things to normal. Yeah, that'd be good, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be good. So good news. Um, all right, that's that's it for uh, this show. We went way over. There's a couple <laughs> stories that maybe we'll talk about next week instead. Yay! But thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, <laughs> Dan's excited. Thanks for telling a friend. Dan should be excited because next week we've got what does Dan know? All <laughs> right, yeah. oh, oh, man. I can't wait to find out. Uh, another another week yeah. studying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who do I know? He's gonna be on Pandora in the '90s hip hop channel <laughs> for the next week trying to figure it out. Uh, we got what does Dan know? We've got a, uh, a whole flight of beer from M Special Brewery. Ooh, oh shit! Yeah, that'll be nice to talk about uh and dan's got another movie next week and Damn right <laughs> and some more news and all the good stuff you expect from us so I'll, in the meantime i'll drink beer next week oh hey there's a change sounds yeah, good yeah, right. hey, we yeah, know. yeah me too why not yeah. sure come on let's give the listeners what they want that's right yeah. yes. us drinking beer three drunk guys that can't talk yeah <laughs> <Hi everybody. laughs> so anyways in the meantime check us out at the unfiltered gentleman.com facebook unfiltered gentleman instagram the unfiltered gentleman on twitter it's at unfiltered gents and please 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 drunk dial us 805 yeah, 805-538-BEER. I promise you no one's going to answer. It's a voicemail. Drunk dial is put us in your phone books. When you're at the bar or the club and you're getting hammered, you're like, I need to call my ex-girlfriend. Like, no, 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 no. Call the unfiltered yeah, gentleman. come on, man. We're here for you. You can let all yep. your secrets out. Yay. Mm-hmm. Let us know how you feel. 805-538-BEER. It's 2337. Put it in your phone books. We might be saving you a res- uh, restriction order. Yeah. yeah, restraining order. Restraining order. One of <laughs> those, those two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might thank your wife and your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you thank us for your wife and your oh, girlfriend. Man. So uh, anyways, do, of all, do all that stuff. And uh, in the meantime, stay, uh, stay hydrated. Yes. On that note, <laughs> good night, everybody.